As you've noticed, I've never edited or provided links <laughs> on my videos. Um, this is part two. I recommend that you have life insurance. Whole life insurance is best with a quality company. Long ago, I was a New York Life agent. I don't know if they're any good now, but they were good then. I learned a lot. I got into estate planning, and um, they sponsored me to become a registered representative, and I, I really like that. That means uh, you're a member of National... Association of Securities Dealers, and I had the Series 6 and 63 licenses. Series 7 is a what what people know as a, a stockbroker. I was like one thing below that. And make sure that the monthly payments are always going to be affordable to you. Buy a, a little policy. You can also buy a prepaid one with them, or you could. It was $5,000 at the time. Again, one of the reasons I didn't want to do this mini-series is because I said to him, you know, I haven't been to the United States in 20 years except for three times. And I really don't know my own country except reading and watching from afar and I'm not really up on the regulations or anything but if you don't have the money to buy a quality prepaid whole life insurance with a good company I, I said quality or well maybe buy a ten thousand dollar one I sold a few of those There's ten, fifteen thousand dollars um, because a good one will grow over time. Get a waiver of premium which means if you are disabled maybe get two waivers of premium, right? Uh -huh. And it means if you're disabled you don't have to pay your premium the company will pay it for you. It will continue to build cash value. You can borrow the cash from it and either pay it back or not. And the interest you pay is kind of, you know, really to yourself. That's a very simple, simplified thing. But I've needed that cash twice that I can think of in my life and it was a lifesaver. I had it within a week. No problem. No pressure to repay it either. Um, it's up to you. If you feel that you need more life insurance, which is likely, <laughs> but everyone's different, attach a term rider to it with that company. Term life insurance will expire after a term. It's usually 70 years old. It could be sooner, I suppose. It's a term. When I was in the business, the average American earned a million dollars in their lifetime, which sounds incredible, but that's average, and you know how averages are, statistics, you know. and that's before taxes, okay? Whatever. You figure out what, work with a good agent, and they don't charge anything for this. Or they didn't in New York Life. They shouldn't, I don't think. They're not, unless they're a registered investment. Whatever that thing is, you know. Financial advisor, excuse me. Or a a separate estate planner. It varies from state to state in the United States. I was only registered in New York State.
this way if you I mean you can you can let the term policy go um, or not you know but it's attached to the whole life insurance eventually the whole life insurance will pay for itself and ideal and the term policy too you don't have to worry anymore that's it it's and it continues to grow so the death benefit grows and the cash value grows a good agent will explain it to you I'm cold um sorry about the ums oh more important to you <laughs> while you're alive is disability income insurance. And again, I sold a very, very good one with New York Life. And this could also be attached to the whole life policy. So that the whole thing gets paid off. Always get more than one waiver of premium. And you pay more for the waivers for disability. Because if you get sick and can't work, you get a tax-free income per the contract, per the policy. There was, at the time, a two-year uncontestable period. So I told people, really, don't file a claim within two years because they will probably turn you down. You know, you, you don't know. You don't know. It's, it's their right. It's in the contract. And revoke your policy, possibly, making you uninsurable. Because all the life and health insurance policies in the U.S. at that time were registered with the MIB, the Medical Information Bureau, a central information thing. Okay. This is very important. I never worked in property and casualty insurance. You know, your house, your car, this or that. So I won't address that. I recommend you consider that. Okay? And stop yourself from saying Oh, all whole life insurance is bad, or all of this is bad. You know, that's illogical. That's, I mean, who told you that? What's making you think that? It's impossible. There are no absolutes. If you're thinking that way, that's a flaw right then and there. You know, be reasonable. Be good to yourself. At least yourself, but especially... Somebody's going to have to bury you and pay your final expenses or cremate you or whatever. And I think the average cost of a funeral in the United States now, a really cheap one, is $6,000. That might be, oh, long-term care. This is what I'm hearing, now that I'm getting older especially. From people, a lot of people are living with apparent adults over 50, hard times living with parents or parents who have health problems and they're elderly and they may need to live in an assisted living facility or something like that. And last I checked was about 2009, 2010, for my widowed mother in the States. And the cheapest that she could find there in Ohio was about $2,000 a month. And her Social Security was maybe, let's say, roughly 1000 you know. She couldn't do that. And she, she needed it. She had needed it for years. 
I had told my parents, literally since I was 10 years old, to please invest and do it wisely, a 10-year-old. They got angry at me. Well, my mother did. And my father lied to me, it turns out. He said he had everything taken care of, you know, and I, I said, could you be specific? And do you, well, he wouldn't say anything. So I asked, do you have this? Do you have that? Is it this? And he said, yes. Well, it wasn't true. There was no money to deal with him. He was in a refrigerator for some period of time. So I, I had to pay. I mean, and that was it. You know, that was like the beginning of the end of my relationship with my family. <laughs> I want to let you know that I gave them about $100,000 over the decades in direct financial help. And I don't know where it went. Some of the bills I paid myself once, but eh, I would say, <laughs> ooh, no, I don't want to tell you what to do, but my instinct wa wants me to tell you, don't do this with your family, please. They must sink or swim. I'm sorry. You talk to them in advance. Don't let them play the, oh, I'm sensitive, this upsets me game. And, oh, you feel sorry for them because they've had a rough life and, you know, you have to do it. Again, the long-term care policy is basically just buying a bucket of money. You decide how much you can afford. You can pay monthly. They like that. You can do it automatically via your checking account. Uh, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. Or you could when I was in the business. That was what made me happy. And I sold a lot of policies to people um, whose profession limited them in what they could get in the way of insurance, of course. Maybe they were doing something dangerous or whatever. All these things are rated by the underwriters. Excuse me, underwriters. And if really it was obvious that they couldn't swing the premiums, you get less and you get a disability payout for perhaps only five years or, you know, or to age 60 or I don't know, whatever. These, are, these, are, these things are custom tailored. Believe me, it's not a, a standard product. And if anybody tries to sell you a standard product, just walk away. Because that's not right. One size does not fit all, I always say. So I hope that this summarizes my feelings about insurance. I think next I'm going to talk about the last will and testament. All right. Let's see how this goes.